some more definitions and stuff. And then about part of the way through it, it gets over your head because it talks about the mathematicals and all that, which we're still going to listen to it. And I want you to pay attention to it, but I don't think you're mathematically ready to be able to do these formulas. So we're not going to go deep into those. Okay. Are you recording? If Cole hit the button, you're recording. Yeah. Well, that's we're embarrassing. Recording. That's not all. No, we weren't recording when that was going on. Stop thinking from the glow. That trick you need to do with balloons make your hair stick up. Or, of course, a lightning strike. They're all governed by the same principle, static electricity. Static electricity occurs when an object obtains a net amount of positive or negative electric charge, creating an imbalance that wants to be returned to equilibrium. It's effective. Okay, so the other day when we watched Bill, he didn't actually give us a definition of static electricity, but today we have one. Static electricity occurs when an object attains a net amount of positive or negative electric charge, creating an imbalance, and it wants to be returned to equilibrium. So a good example of that is like you've been out working all day and you're hot and you're sweaty and you're tired and you go home and you take a shower and you sit down and you feel this moment of, ah, oh, right? Yes. Yeah. That is equilibrium. When all's good in the world, that is equilibrium. So that's what happens with the static electricity. It builds up and builds up. And then when it releases through some type of like lightning or, uh, you know, like when we rub our feet and we touch you and you shock, that's relieving it. That takes it back to an equilibrium. So static electricity occurs when an object attains a net amount of positive or negative electric charge, creating an imbalance that wants to return back to equilibrium. So when all that static electricity gets built up in the sky during storms and the lightning strikes, that's, that is the atmosphere trying to get back to an equilibrium. It's getting rid of that built up electricity it has. You have quite a bit of the definitions today. If you want to call them definitions. Terms, vocab, whatever you want to call it. The video is only nine minutes long, people. Effects aren't always as dramatic as lightning. Let's take two pieces of tape. Was everybody done getting that? Yeah. Do I need to go back? Nope. Who said yeah? Charlie, did you get it all? Sorry, cheese. All right, I'll go back. I went, I should have asked before I went on. Sorry. Excuse me. Both of you stop talking. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Always as dramatic as lightning. Right. Let's take two pieces of tape that are both stuck to a table. If you rip them both off the table and try to stick them together, that should be easy enough, right? But it turns out that they repel one another. But try this: stick one on top of the other, rip the pair off the table, then separate the pieces. They're no longer repelled. Now they're attracted to one another. In the first scenario, both pieces of tape stole negative charges from the table. And since light charges repel, the pieces moved away from one another. In the second scenario, one piece of tape stole negative charges from the other, leaving the pieces with opposite overall charges, making them attract. Our study of electricity begins here, with basic observations about electric charges that hundreds of years ago sparked the imagination and innovation that changed our world forever. Okay, so she said many years ago, 
the invention of electricity changed our world forever. And it did. And the only thing that really has happened that was that dramatic or that created such a big change in, in our lives on earth was the internet. And, which I didn't think about it this way, but as Mr. Day said, and if it wasn't for electricity, we still wouldn't have the internet. So that's the, that's the impact that elect, the development of electricity has done on our lives. There's not been anything else happen that has that big an impact on our lives we even have as the creation of electricity. Do what? We wouldn't even have cars. We would use some that electricity to power cars. Yeah, because you have to have a battery to just you run your... push it. <laughs> we like well, you you got to push your car everywhere you're going, you might as well just walk. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. No, like push started. Like Flintstones. Oh, well, yeah. Out of clutch. If it has a clutch, you, you could do that. I follow you now. This is a different lady, but she stole the other lady. I don't know, this study talks really fast. To understand fast. electricity, you should start with an atom. Atoms contain charged particles, positive protons and negative electrons. You should remember this is an equal last year. Meaning the net electric charge of the atom is zero. It's electrically neutral. In solid materials, protons stay fixed, but some electrons are free to move around. These moving electrons are called free electrons. They reside in the atom's outer shell as valence electrons, and they're easily plucked off and carried around when acted upon by an outside force. How e Ah, free electrons. We didn't talk about that last year. So, free electrons resides in the atom's outer shell. So, over here, depending on you know, how many protons and electrons it has, whichever shell is the outer shell. So on this one, this is our outer shell. All of these electrons have the ability to move from its atom to another person, to another atom. And sometimes they freely go over there and then sometimes they're plucked or taken away or stolen away from, okay? The outer shell though, there isn't an actual shell called that's definitely the outer shell. The outer shell depends on how many electrons that element has. But the outer, that, um, and those are called free electrons. That means they can move back and forth. Now the other ones in here cannot. So like on this one, Shell one and two's electrons cannot move freely and go over to another one. Just this one because it's the outer. Now, if I was talking about hydrogen, I would only have one shell, right? Yes. And so that shell would be hydrogen's outer shell, the first shell. You see what I'm saying about not, there's no particular just outer shell. I think somebody put that down as an answer on the test. Not y'all, but my seventh graders. Instead of saying that the electrons live in the shells, they put that they lived in the outermost shell. Well, they don't only live in the outermost shell. They live in all the, whatever, however many shells they need, depending on how many there is. That is not necessary. Are we ready? No. Easy as you said. Okay. Acted upon by an outside force. How easy it is for electrons to move around depends on the material. And we describe the materials in the same manner that we did the heat transfer with conductors and insulators. Materials that are conductors, like copper, let free electrons move freely throughout the solid, while insulators, like wood, hold on to them tightly, limiting their flow. So we've got insulators and conductors with free electrons and we moving around. we on those yesterday, what right? What causes these yeah. charged particles to move in the first place? The answer is an imbalance of electrical charge when some part of an object has a different number of free electrons than another part. So when we talk about an object having an overall negative charge, 
we mean that it has too many electrons. And when we talk about an object having an overall positive charge, we... All right, so if an object has too many electrical charges, no. So if it has an overall negative charge, that means it has too many electrons built up in it. If it has an overall negative charge, that means that it has too many electrons built up in it or on it or around it. Or you can put negative charge equals too many electrons and cut all them words out. A negative charge equals too many electrons. And then we have a thing called a positive charge mm -hmm. or negative charge. We mean that it has too many electrons. And when we talk about an object having an overall positive charge, we mean... Okay, so a positive charge is missing electrons. So those free electrons that, has, that lives out there in that outermost shell has has came away, whether they be plucked or took off on their own and go to another element. We get, so therefore it doesn't have enough. So a positive charge is when there's missing electrons or not enough electrons because you're floating around doing something else. Everybody got that? Okay. missing for the electrons. This imbalance can be created and resolved in lots of different ways. Say you have a glass rod that's electrically neutral and you rub it with a cloth. That physical interaction causes electrons to hop onto the cloth, leaving the rod with an overall positive charge. This is called charging by friction. Both the cloth and the rod began with... Okay, charging by friction. It's a physical interaction between two different types of objects. So that would be like your balloon and your hair. The balloon is an object, your hair is an object, and we're moving it. So that's an interaction. It's a physical interaction. Listen to me, it's not gonna be up there. Physical interaction is on the board. Physical interaction between two <laughs> different types of objects. And when rubbed together, causes friction. So physical, interaction. physical interaction of two different types of objects. So like in this example, it's the glass rod versus a, and I'm, guessing that's a cotton cloth, could be a satin cloth, it could be a, a polyester cloth. So two physical, two um, different objects. I rub together to create friction. Example, balloon on hair. That might help y'all remember it. Because I'm creating a friction there, right? Or like when you scuffle your socks on the carpet, you create that friction so you can shock someone. How many of y'all went home last night doing that? No. Really? I'm proud of it. 
Wait, why are you proud of me for that? I grab a hot shot. I'm proud of y'all for not going home and shocking your family members. Oh my god. Like, uh, look what we learned in science today. I don't, I don't have any carpet in my house. Yeah. I'm gonna try it now. Alright, so does everybody have this down? What the video was about yesterday where the kid would bring his socks on the floor and he would check someone in the shop. I don't think Can I try it real quick? On my leg, don't touch that on me. It's gonna work. I'm hard to touch. When we get done taking that, it's gonna be easy. See, I tried on Landon. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Because all that's going through the seat was touching the metal of the seat. Oh, I didn't, I didn't use it. Yeah, so that's what happened. See, I just got blamed in. I just took it away from my sister. Like you had represented. You have that yourself. Leave the water. Did you have a reason to be out here today? Now you do not. The rod began with a neutral charge, but after friction, the rod has a net positive charge. But whether the rod ends up with a net positive or negative charge depends on the materials that you use. The ancient Greeks actually rubbed fur against amber and discovered that the amber would then attract hair and feathers. Today we understand that the fur stole electrons during the process, giving the amber an overall positive charge just like the glass rod. Now it's important to note that no new charges were created during this process. The overall charge between the two objects is still zero. This is known as the law of conservation of electric charge. It says that you can never create a net electric charge. Instead, charge can only move from one place to another. Now if we bring our pod... Does that look blurry to y'all? Yeah. Is that better? Yes. Law well, of conversation between electrical charge. It says that you can neither create a net electric charge. Instead, charge can only be moved from one place to another. So we cannot create electrical charge. Mother Earth basically has already done that for us by creating electrons, right? Because we know that our electrons is where we get our electricity from, the electrons in our atmosphere. So you cannot create a net electric charge. It can only be carried from one place to another which is why we have to have conductors to move our electricity from one place to another. Remember, conductors is something that will carry electrons easily. Hey, any of y'all have a piece of plexiglass at home that's about eight by 10 or a little bigger that I could borrow for tomorrow? Work. I have like a big sheet, like layman's company. Like a whole sheet? Yes, it's like a huge sheet. Though. Yeah, it's like, no, that would be too big. I could cut them. Uh, you think your dad would want you to? I don't know. Well, yeah. I would ask before I started chomping on that big piece of... If he'll let you cut it, I need it cut down to eight about, you know, an 8 by 10 or 11 by 14 because I'm going to put it over the top of something for what we're going to do tomorrow. When this, I'm going to have it set up in stages tomorrow or stem lab so you'll go from kind of like I did a couple of times last year you'll go from pod will go from group to group and I'll tell you to rotate and do different things at each station for you to do and I really want to do this one but I have to have a piece of plexiglass so I'm on it. I'm on a mission to find a piece of plexiglass. I wonder if there's any in the lab. You're a woman on a mission. There's any in the lab. Yes. Oh. Does that have to do with what we're talking about? What you were talking about. Okay. But not the, well, well, it all ties together. Our lab tomorrow does tie together in what notes we've been taking this week. I mean, not really. Okay. I have to do with science. Oh. This is science. Just ask Ooh. the question. Okay. Do you get to ask some questions? Okay. Do you get to pick if you go to STEM uh, lab? Or no, I don't get to pick. My STEM schedule set up for me. So on the days that we don't have STEM, then we go to the other lab. That's how that works. So we don't have green long jeans. No, 
know, tomorrow you don't have to have long group breakfast. Has everybody got this definition down and understand what it means? Any questions on it? It's a net electric charge. Instead, charge can only move from one place to another. Now, if we bring our positively charged glass rod in contact with another neutral rod, some of the negative charge, that is some electrons, will jump from the neutral rod to the positive one until both objects have the same distribution of charge. So now we have two rods that are both slightly positive. Okay, so that was called, did anybody write down charge by contact? Guys, you gotta start being more forthcoming of deciding what you should write down or not when you hear it. Charging by contact, and basically that is just bringing two alike objects together or two objects together. So like the piece of tape, they took the piece of tape, they took the piece of tape off the desk and turned it this way and they, they, they didn't want each other, didn't like each other, did they? But then they took the two pieces of tape and stacked them on top of each other. And so then they shared their electrical charges, which made one positive and one negative, so opposites attract. So then they attracted, before they were both either positive or both either negative charges. So charging by contact is putting two items together To create a bolt, to create a positive and a negative charge. Probably one of the better ways to say it. Pretty two positive. Not two positive. Two objects. Oh. Objects. Okay, so like objects. Excuse. They don't necessarily always have to be a like object. Just two objects. That's the reason I said just two objects. It works better if they are alike. And what they do when you put them together, then they distribute charges until they both have the same not the same charge, but the same number of protons and the same number of electrons. So then therefore they become one or the other. The main thing you just need to know is that the ch charging by contact is bringing two objects together and then they share electrons and protons. Or a negative charge and a positive charge. Protons will jump into a neutral rod to the positive one until both objects have the same distribution of charge. So now we have two rods that are both slightly positive. This is called charging by contact. When the two objects touch, charges move between them. Okay, so charges can move when different materials touch each other, either through friction or simple contact. But materials don't actually have to touch in order for their electrons to get all rearranged. Say you bring a positively charged rod close to a metal conductive rod, then the electrons in part of the metal rod will be drawn towards the positive rod. Now the side with more electrons has a negative charge, leaving the other side of the rod with fewer electrons and a positive charge. You know what we've done here? We've polarized the metal rod. We've redistributed the charge in order to create an... All right, so polarizing the charge means you're going to redu redistribute it the charge in order to create an imbalance of charge within an object. So. Isn't that how it comes this part? Huh? Isn't that how it comes this part? Mm -hmm. So the campus also has to do with the magnetic field of Earth. Yes. 
Yes, you can just put down what's on the TV. That would be fabulous. Colorized is redistribution of charge in order to create an imbalance of charge within an object or object or, or an object that is still electrically neutral. So colorize would not be taking it out and freezing it like oh. a polar bear likes it, okay? It's supposed to be funny, guys. Make it funny for us. So funny, no. Oh, it's getting nasty. What'd you say? Oh, it's okay, Ellie, because I made a really bad joke. Everybody laughed until I brought it to their attention that yes, it was a really bad joke. Alright, does everybody like this definition down? Are we still in class? Yeah. It just popped in my head. I don't know what you said. You know, it's kind of dangerous sometimes the things that pop in my head. I mean, usually I'm pretty good at filtering in here, but I let that one slip out. I didn't think that went over quite good enough before it came out. I thought you were being for real though, because I have a polar bear. And I've been able to do this and get that word from the polar. Polarized. That's why I didn't laugh. It's <laughs> so funny if you let that laugh. Imbalance of charge within an object, an object that's still electrically neutral. Now imagine that we slice the metal rod right down the center. It still hasn't touched the positive rod, but since we split it while an imbalance was present, we're left with one positive side and one negative side. This process is known as charging by induction, creating a net charge without contacting another object. Charging by induction is creating a net charge without contact of another object. So they took the object and cut it in half, and on one end we had the electric, the, the negative charge, and on the other end we had a positive charge. So that's kind of like your battery, your car battery, and they have the post, and they have a, a negative post and an electrical post. Mm -hmm. One side is negative and the other side is positive. That's basically what they did here when they cut this in two. It made that stick where one side of it was positive and one side of it was negative, but it didn't make contact with the other positive pole over here. I know this is not sometimes. Wait, what are they? Fun part of science. It's right on the board there, Miss Allie. Okay, are we doing this all week? Are we on every day all summer? No, we're not doing this all week because tomorrow we're going to the lab. Stem lab? Mm -hmm. She usually just said that earlier. Really Probably wouldn't have had it in there. We don't usually. Fair enough. Has everybody got this down? No. yourself open for that one. <laughs> I didn't, that didn't offend me. Nothing offends me. <laughs> oh, 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 are you ready? Hey, 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 hey. We're recording. <laughs> After now, class, the top objects okay. connected to a much larger neutral conducting object, then the net charge gets redistributed so that the smaller object loses most of its net charge. How large an object are we talking about exactly? Well, how about Earth? The Earth's surface is a fairly good conductor in most places, and for our purposes, it can be considered. Uh, the Earth's surface is a fairly 
good conductor. Now, what is a conductor? But what does a conductor do? Let's know. Electrons travel through. Right, it lets things flow through it easily, right? So, Earth's surface is a fairly good conductor in most places. And for most, for our purposes, um, Earth surface is considered neutral, which means what? It has no negative or positive, positive charge. charge. Yes, very good, Charlie. It has no negative or positive charge. If it's neutral, it's like a neutron. Remember, neutrons are neutral. They have no negative or electrical charge. So the Earth's surface is a fairly good conductor in most places. And for our purposes, it can be considered neutral. But you could just put that the Earth's surface is a fairly good conductor and has a neutral charge. You don't, you don't have to write every single word. You can paraphrase your notes. And you'll want to get what you do to paraphrase it when you're not writing every single word. Because when there's a person up here just talking, you're not going to be able to mute them unless you do like I did in college and record them and then go home. Like I took notes and recorded my lecture classes and then I'd go back to my dorm or to my house and redo my notes with my recorder because I could stop them and get caught up because I didn't take good notes. Now, the further I went into college, the better I got at taking notes because I started picking up these little tricks. Well, you don't have to write word by word. You can paraphrase it. You know, you can leave some of those words out and just have your, what I call, keywords of your definition. Unless if it's like a word. Neutral. So connecting a charged object to the ground creates a way for the charge to leak into the earth, rendering the object electrically neutral. This is known as grounding. So let's say we repeat. All right, now we took the definition for grounding yesterday, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right, so we should need to write it again. No. Does everybody understand what grounding means? Yes. Yes. Who said no? Let me go back and look. Do we know what it means? It means when. And all like electricity is grounded to the ground. Grounded. We're studying the lectures. Okay, so did we talk about the electric fence yesterday? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So remember we talked about the electric fence and if the electric wire touched the metal pole, then the electric fence wouldn't work because the electric pole grounded it, which meant the, the metal pole took the electricity out of the electric wire that we had, the, the wire we had strung and put it into the ground. It grounded it. Mm -hmm. So like the rubber tires on a car, when a car gets hit by lightning, you don't get hurt because those rubber tires grounds it. It absorbs all of that electricity because it's an insulator. Remember we talked about that? Yes. So grounding, that's what it means. It, it's Oh, it like, it's like it cuts it off at the path. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. I'm trying to think of a way to get it where you can understand it. It's like you're walking down a path and all of a sudden a brick wall just stops there and you have to go another way. What? Well, or, kind of, but you don't, you don't always redirect electricity. It absorbs it. The ground absorbs it. It's kind of like a sponge. Kind of like a sponge, yeah. It absorbs, it goes, it, goes, it goes into the earth and the earth absorbs it and, redistri and redistributes it. But it's considered grounding because it's going into the ground, Allie. Okay? It's considered grounding. It's called grounding because it's going into the ground. So, do you understand? Okay. I, 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 I knew I did what, I just didn't know I do you understand it? Was. You understand better now. Yeah. All right. Electrically neutral. This is known as grounding. So let's say we repeat the previous experiment, but we bring a negatively charged rod close to our neutral. The neutral rod becomes polarized with a net positive charge close to the charged rod and a negative charge on the opposite side. But if we ground the metal rod, the negative charge is repelled by the charged rod. Now we have a place to go. The earth, the negative charges scurry away, leaving the metal rod with an overall positive charge. Now, if we sever the connection to the ground, 
oral rod remains positively charged. This process required no contact between the rods, only a connection to the ground. Okay, so we've talked about how opposite charges attract and like charges <coughs> repel, but how do we quantify those interactions in terms of equations and units? Well, we'll want to find the force on charged okay, particles this is in newtons. Kind of so to calculate the number of newtons, we'll first need to measure so the charge to denoted by Q. Since objects can be positive or negatively charged, Q can help you both positive and negative values. For example, one electron has a charge of negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. That means there are 6.24 times 10 to the 18th electrons for every <coughs> negative coulomb. This value, the charge of a single electron in <coughs> coulombs, is known as the elementary charge and it's denoted with a lowercase e. We we'll use this notation a lot when talking about protons and electrons, since protons have a charge of positive e and electrons of negative e. Now that we have a way to measure the charge, we can calculate the force.